Hi everyone, welcome to your horse painting class. My name is Miss M, and in front of you, you should have your canvas with your horse outline. You should have a paper towel, your larger brush, your smaller brush, a cup of water. Also be sure you have white paint, your purple paint, black, pink, green, and yellow. I always keep a paper plate around too, just in case I want to mix. Uh, but if you do not have all those materials, you're welcome to put pause on the video and then come back whenever you're ready. But the first thing we are gonna do in our painting class is we are going to wash our two brushes and then dry our two brushes gently on our paper towel. So we wanna get our brushes nice and clean Mine I have been using on a lot of classes, so mine will have some paint come off, but you do have some nice new clean brushes that should not have any paint on them. So I'm gonna give mine an extra little wash just in case. So twirl it around, I'm just gonna pat them on your paper towel. We are gonna start with the background, so everything behind our horse, and we are gonna start with yellow more in this area kind of a little bit above uh, the neck so up here we are going to use our big brush and um, we are going to kind of be sweeping left to right nice long brush strokes so again be sure you have a nice clean big brush i want to make sure i have all that black off of mine i am going to dip my big brush into the yellow paint so big brush, yellow paint. Be sure you don't have too much on there. You can always wipe it off on the side. I'm gonna come up a little bit higher than the neck and I'm gonna make a line right here and then maybe to the right up here. So go ahead and make that line a little bit below the ears to the left and to the right. Once I'm done, I am gonna come down a little bit lower Just paint side to side with my yellow. So yellow, paint side to side. And again, it's kind of to the right of the ear, to the left of the ear, a little bit lower. Make that line going left to right and then painting all of that space underneath it. It is okay if you have just a little bit peeking through, a bit above the nose, a little bit above the back area. You do want to get the back area covered with yellow. If you grab some of the pencil marks, that's okay. Just kind of slowly work it through your canvas. Get everything nice and smooth and yellow. And I'm just going side to side. Be sure you get rid of all bumps. And again, I'm moving side to side for my horizon in the background, side to side. It is a really bright yellow. So I am gonna lighten it up just a little bit by adding white to my big brush. I'm not gonna even uh, wash it. And sorry, mine does have a little bit of blue on it from the previous class, but you're just gonna take your big brush. You don't even wash the yellow off of it. You just add a little bit of white to your big brush. Tap it on your paper towel a couple of times so you don't have too much on there. And go over your yellow just to kind of soften it a little bit. And you're going over all that yellow that you just painted. Again, with that side to side movement getting it nice and a little bit less bright. It's kind of dulling it a little bit, getting that first area a little bit lighter on the right side. And then I can go back to more white paint, tapping it on the paper towel and doing the same thing. Kind of muting that yellow, making it a little bit softer. So white, tap on my paper towel, getting this area the left a little bit lighter. Perfect. I am going to fold these colors over, which means I'm just going to do the same thing as I did before from this line over, the line that we made before, and this line above. I'm going to go side to side, add some yellow, and 
then add some white. And again, I'm not even cleaning my brush. I just know that I need a little bit of each where that yellow folds over. Again, that bottom line of the yellow, that top line of the yellow, painting side to side, and then adding white, tapping it on my paper towel so I don't have too much white on there. And get some of that yellow off. I am going to do kind of the same thing as I did up here, lower down here with my yellow. I'm not even going to clean my brush. So I'm just going to have this strip of yellow to the left and to the right. I'm going to go into the yellow and a little bit less than halfway. So not this whole space, a little bit less than halfway, maybe about a ruler's width. Down here, I'm going to make a line with my yellow. I'm even gonna turn it over here to the right as well. And I'm gonna turn it over here on the bottom where the neck kind of curls over with the yellow so I know where to stop and around this neck area right here. So that's kind of tricky. So I took my yellow to the right at this kind of part where it protrudes out. I'm gonna go to the right, excuse me, to the right where it curls over. And then down here, I'm gonna curl it over on the bottom as well. So you can hopefully see that. And then I'm gonna go back to my yellow, paint all this side to the right. My line yellow, right to left. Make sure it's nice and smooth with your yellow. Curls over. And to the bottom to the right of that line so you don't want to go into where the horse's um, uh, kind of chest area is going to be black later so you want to kind of go to the right of the uh, horse you can paint all that area yellow and same thing as before without cleaning our brush we're just going to dip into the white in just a moment and kind of mute it to get it a little bit lighter so white paint Tap it on the paper towel, and then I'm gonna go over on top. Oops, sorry. Get everything a little bit lighter. All right. Looks great. And then uh, without cleaning my brush, I am going to go into the pink a little bit. So I'm not going to even clean my brush. And I'm going to go into the white a little bit. So I didn't even clean my brush. I still have yellow on it. I'm going to go into the pink a little bit and the white a little bit with my big brush. Tap it on my paper towel. I am going to overlap over my yellow just a little bit. So I just kind of came down from here to here. So you still see a little bit of that yellow peeking through. And then about a ruler's width down, I'm gonna use that same pink and white on my brush. Make a line. So I have a little bit of yellow peeking through and then maybe about a ruler's width down. And I will kind of turn it over to the left and to the right. And in this area, I am going to paint with this pink and white. So I can go back for more pink, more white, and just kind of go back and forth with my brush. Be sure it's a nice light pink. You don't want it to be too dark. Also, be sure that you are using your water, tapping it on your paper towel, and using your water to kind of help move your paint over... Water is going to help move your paint over side to side a little bit smoother. It's also going to help this area where the yellow and the white are blending together. It's going to help that work together a little bit too. I'm going to go over my lines just a little bit, maybe even a little bit further down and sweep over it. 
have a blending area where the yellow and pink, light pink are working. And that water is just going to help those two work together a little bit better. So this whole strip, I'm going to add pink and white too, and then a little bit of water to help everything kind of move a little bit better and easier. Add a little bit more white too. And it's going to be a light pink, so you want it almost to be like a baby pink, a really light pink. And I'm only sweeping my brush side to side and keeping between those two lines. And again, I did go over my line that I make down here and just kind of swept, kind of flicked my brush side to side so I don't see that perfect line anymore. You can always go back to more pink, more white. If you want it to be darker, add more pink. If you want it to be um, lighter, add more white. Again, be sure you're going over your yellow with a little bit of your light pink as well. You don't want it to be stripy. You want to have an area right here where the yellow and light pink are working together. So it doesn't go from one color to the next. You have a blending area. And add more white to my really nice soft pink. Side to side with my brush. In a moment, I am going to curve over my light pink to the left side and to the right side of my canvas. So the left side, I'm going to do pink, oop, white, maybe pat some off so I don't have too much on there. And I'll go between those two lines and be sure to overlap over my pink, uh, excuse me, over my yellow just a little bit as well. Same thing, go between my two lines. And you don't want to give your yellow too much of a drying time. You're just kind of jumping from one to the next. And that water is really going to help it move. And adding some white to it too will definitely help soften it out as well. It's okay if it gets on the horse a little bit. You are just going to paint it black later on. So if you're getting some pink into the horse, not a problem. Soften this up. Down here. I'm going to kind of soften this up a little bit more down here by just coming down a little bit more. And sweeping just some water on top. Get a nice soft pink. Add some more white to that pink so it's not too dark. So pink, white, water, come down into your yellow. Don't forget about the sides as well. And if you are not to this point, you're welcome to pause the video until you're ready for the next step. So the next step is, again, pretty, um, pretty similar to the one that we did up here. We're going to do the same thing as we did up here, down here, and we are going to go all the way up. So we're going to add pink here and pink um, here. Don't worry about this part right here. And then white, and then, uh, excuse me, pink, white, and then water. So same idea. Do not worry about this little patch right here. Um, and we are going to overlap over the yellow down here. And up here so a little bit of pink on my big brush I still have not cleaned it a little bit of white and I'm gonna come down here I'm gonna come a little bit past the yellow and up here I'm gonna come up a little bit past the yellow so you'll see those two lines and then again sweep side to side with my pink and white it's okay if you get a little bit on your horse not a problem Just be careful not to lose those lines because you want to make sure you have the outline of your horse for later. And I'll come up here and add a little bit. And be sure these are pretty similar. This the pink on uh, in the sky is kind of 
the same as the one further down here on the land. Again, I do want to curl over my pink and white mix to the sides, overlapping over the yellow, and then painting in all those areas. And water will definitely help move the pink and white. Be sure it's a nice light pink and be sure you're going over your line work down here, breaking it up with some sweeps going side to side. So it looks a little bit softer. So you don't see that perfect line that you made from earlier. can see that side to side overlap some sweeps going on I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter so it kind of works with the same pink that's up there again water will really help your pink your white and your yellow work together it'll help them blend together get them to all be wet paints that are moving together nicely don't forget to tap your brush on your paper towel after you dip it in the water. Kind of go over it and smooth it out like so. Like your pink and your uh, your light pink and your yellow are not working together too well you can let the pink dry for a little bit and then just kind of go over it with the yellow to break it up yeah perfect okay. all right um next thing i'm gonna do once i am done adding my um pink. I'm not going to clean my brush again. I'm going to go straight to purple. So there's still a little bit of pink on my brush. I'm going to go straight to that really pretty purple and my big brush it hasn't been um, washed and dried. It still has a little bit of pink on it. I'm going to come down from the top and overlap a little bit with um, on top of my pink. So I have a line going side to side. Sorry, I'll move that actually over here so you can see it better. So I went a little bit lower than where the pink ended. So I came down and then I'm gonna go to the left and to the right. And all that space above my purple line, including the very top of my canvas, I'm gonna sweep my brush. So I'm just gonna flick my big brush going back and forth. And don't forget to flick over your line. You don't wanna break it up. You don't wanna see that perfect line anymore. And with this, purple color you will definitely need a couple of coats um, which means you do want to let it dry for a couple minutes and then go back over it um, to make it darker if you do like your purple this light you're welcome to leave it as is but if you want it to be a little bit darker you can go back and give it another coat And I like to do nice long brush strokes, side to side, make it look nice and smooth. Don't forget about the right side and the top and the bottom. And again, you can use your water to help move your purple paint a little bit nicer too. Some of my purple down here some sweeps coming down into the pink some nice soft ones to break that up come a little bit further down maybe even a little further down i'm gonna add some water tap 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 so i did come down on top of my pink with some sweeps of purple just so it kind of works together a little bit better you don't go straight from a, a purple to the pink you have some areas where Purple is just kind of floating on top of the pink. Kind of helps it look a little bit more real. 
and they're nice long sweeps side to side. And then I just used my water to help that purple smooth out a little bit better. sides a little bit too long. All right, and again, if you do want your purple to be uh, darker, let it dry and then go back over it and it'll darken it up. But when it's not too shiny anymore, that means it's nice and dry and you can go back and lay another coat on top. We have a beautiful sky. Again, don't forget about the sides and the very top on top of it as well. All right. Uh, whenever you are done, you are going to wash and dry your big brush. Be sure to get all that purple off of it. You can even use your paper towel to kind of give your big brush a hug. And uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to make a really light yellow on my uh, brush. So I am going to take a nice bit of white, a little scoop of it. I'm going to put it on my paper plate and a dot of yellow. So just a little bit of yellow. I'm going to mix myself a really light yellow. So super light yellow. This is going to be the sun and then a little bit down here. Um, on the lower part of our canvas. So really light yellow, really, really light yellow. Almost like a vanilla color too. Make sure I've made enough. All right. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of light ye uh, yellow on the bottom here, just the very kind of edge of my canvas. I still do see some of the yellow peeking through. You can add water, tap, tap, tap and go over that light yellow mix to kind of help it blend a little bit more with my yellow. So again, there is still a little bit of bright yellow peeking through, but I did just kind of line it up just a little bit on the edge. Um, also, you're gonna use your yellow for the sun. And the sun is gonna be pretty much up here in the yellow and it's just almost like a pizza slice. I'll I'll go in there and make a curvy line right here. So you'll see that little curvy line right there. And I'll come down where the pink is. And I'm gonna make a really light moon. So again you'll see this curve right here. Kind of looks like a pizza slice the crust. And then you're gonna come over yeah, and I did overlap over the pink a little bit. There is gonna be purple mountains on top of it later. If you feel like your sun is not um, bright, then you can let it dry and then go back with just some more white uh, or white and yellow on top. So you definitely want it to stand out. Again, a curve over here, straight, straight. Kind of looks like a pizza slice. Excellent. And you don't have to curve it over to the right side or anything. Once you are done with that, you are gonna wash and dry your brush, and then we're gonna make the peaks of our mountain. We're gonna make, the, and the peaks of our uh, mountain are gonna be done with um, our big brush and our purple paint. So I'm done with my sun. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna dip into that purple. I'm gonna start on the left side and just kind of make the tops of my mountains. Um, I'm gonna overlap over the yellow just a little bit now that it's nice and dry. I'm gonna come up. It. like so come up and diagonal and then kind of down I still see some of that yellow peeking through on the left on the right side and then up here I'm gonna kind of come up oh, let's see I guess I, it's probably easy to start down here and still see my Sun a little bit and I come up underneath my Sun and then a little bit to the left right here. 
make sure it looks nice and it dips down. Okay. It kind of has a pointy end and then it dips down. You'll still see that sun peeking through right there. So a little bit to the right of the ear. I'm going to peek up to the top of my mountain and over to the right. And then over here, my mountains are there. Perfect. And be careful if this uh, sun is still um, wet, just give it a, some time to dry before you put your purple on there. So I have the two peaks of purple. So there's my two mountains. And my mountains, later on I'll go in with, with my brush and just kind of make a little bit more jaggedy edges. Um, but once I've laid that down, I am going to go in there and paint all that space on the left side underneath it with this purple side to side. So probably need a couple of coats too. It looks pretty light still. And then I am going to curve it over the top. The back is, so I'll make that line. And then the top of my mountain, I'll make that line to where they both kind of curve over and then I can paint that purple right there. Again, painting side to side. I would definitely give this a couple of coats, mostly kind of at the top part of the peak. Um, also, whenever I go back and give it another coat, uh, that's when I can kind of go back and just kind of give it a little bit of a movement to my brushes, kind of a little bit of up and down movement with my big brush. So I have more of a, like a rocky mountain kind of a feel, no straight lines, there's a little bit of a curve. And then on the right side, I'm gonna go back and just come down a little bit with my purple like so. And then you still have a little bit of pink peeking through but I'm going to paint all this side to side with my purple. You can be sure you're staying in the mountain area. And I will go in there and just kind of give it some kind of rocky feel to it in just a moment. And down here where the pink and the purple meet, you're welcome to kind of just use a little bit of water on your brush. Tap it on the paper towel. It's going to sweep just a little bit of a water on top of it so that purple and pink kind of blend together a little bit better. So I just added a little bit of water to my brush down here where the pink and purple meet. And then I'm going to go back and give it another coat. Up here I do want my mountain to be a little bit more pointy so I'm just going to go in there and outline it so that to the left and to the right make it a little bit pointier top. And then I'm just going to drag my brush and just kind of create a little bit of a jaggedy edges, but be sure not to get rid of your sun. And again, I would go back in there and give this another coat to make the purple a little bit darker. Maybe I'll go back a little bit later once it's a little bit more dry to add some more of that purple in there because I can still see a lot of the yellow peeking through. There you go. Once you are done with that, you are going to go in there and just use your large brush to paint all of your horse um, a uh, black silhouette. So I'm going to go in there, wash and dry my brush after I'm done with my purple mountains. And again, if you are not to this point, you're welcome to stop the tape. Kind of go back and touch things up if you need to. Big brush, black paint. I'm going to start over here on the back and just going to drag my brush so I have nice clean out, uh, lines on the outside. I'm going to cover up my pencil mark as well. So I'm taking my big brush, making sure all the other paint is nice and dry before I get anywhere close to it. a nice clean outline so I can find the horse later on. Drag that 
gosh. Your, your horse does curve over in the bottom, so where the yellow and white meet, you can put a line. And then where the purple and white meet, you can put another line. And the whole thing is going to be purple, so you can go in there and just paint it a nice... Excuse me, black. The whole thing's gonna be painted black. So you can go in there and use your big brush and your black paint to cover all of this space. And be sure there's no bumps once you're done. Be sure everything looks nice and smooth. Because if you have bumpy paint on here, it'll take forever to dry and it'll be hard to put all the uh, beautiful colors of the mane on top. Kind of painting side to side. Be sure you're very careful and staying inside that horse shape. There's no white peeking through. It looks nice and smooth. I'm gonna go over my outline as well. No pencil marks visible. Be sure I get it. It's nice and smooth on there. Before we put any decorations on top, we do wanna make sure that the black is nice and dry. So you might wanna maybe step away for a couple minutes and let the black dry and then come back to it. Um, but we will also be working on the stars um, in the sky, the white stars in the sky while it's drying. So that'll kind of give us some drying time too. But you definitely want to make sure the black is nice and dry. And I even can paint it on the bottom. And if it's shiny, it's wet paint. So be very careful. All right. Um. So once I was done with, uh, once I'm done, I'm gonna wash and dry my big brush. Be sure you get all that black off of it. Just kind of curl paper towel around your your big brush. I am gonna use my small brush. Um. First, the back of it. I'm gonna dip the back of my small brush in the white paint, and I'm gonna make some stars in the sky, mostly in this purple and purple pink area very randomly uh, with my dots um, and the harder I push on the back of my brush the bigger the dots become so be sure you have a nice variety of bigger dots and smaller dots find a nice clean area of my paint so there's the back of my brush I dipped it into the white and I'm gonna have some areas with bigger stars and again kind of staying in this area And I'm using the back of my brush kind of like a stamp. I'm just kind of pushing down on it. Make sure they're not in a perfect line. Excellent. Uh, once I'm done, I'm adding as many stars as I want in the sky. Then I am going to make a little shining star. I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to get it wet. I'm going to bring my small brush to a nice point. And remember, the harder you push on your brush, the thicker the line becomes. So be sure you're just on the tippy toes. It's not folding your bristles, your hairs over. You want it to be just on the tippy toes. A little bit of nice, clean white paint. And around here, this area, I'm going to put a, a little bit, a bit of a bigger star. First, I'm going to make an X shape. 
and then I'm going to make a cross. So it's gonna look something like that. Um, while I'm still waiting for my black to dry, this is also a good time, I'm gonna wash and dry my small brush, to go back and give that purple another coat. So I'm gonna kind of work on the top area to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go back and give this another coat. And then up here, I'm gonna go back and make it And if you feel like you need to do a third coat, go for it. Just be very aware of any black paint that's still shiny, if you want. Um, down here, we get closer to the, to the pink. You can use your water, tap on your paper towel to kind of help it be a little bit softer as it gets closer to the pink underneath it. I would probably do a third coat on mine just to get it a little bit more cleaner. But I definitely need to give it some drying time before I go back. All right. Perfect. All right. Um, so next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, some fun colors um, to my mane. And I'm just going to use my small brush. I'm going to kind of have a little bit of a curve to my mane and a lot of flicking with my brush too, where I am sweeping at the end of my brush stroke, but small brush only. I'm gonna start um, with some purple on my small brush and I'm gonna get it to a nice point. Get most of that water out. Start with some purple. And I'm gonna just sweep some lines. There's a little bit of a curve. And again, be sure you're Black is nice and dry, no shiny black spots. So I'm definitely avoiding those spots that I'm seeing that are a little bit shiny. A little bit shorter up here, a bit longer down here with my mane. You can add as many as you want. So again, this is my purple with my small brush. I have longer. Down Hairs down here and then shorter up here. You don't have to fill up the whole thing. You, you do want to gradually get a lot on there. Um, I am going to wash my small brush once I'm done. I just don't want to get too muddy. So I'm going to add some yellow. Next, again, you're bringing your small brush to a nice point. It is okay if your yellow and your purple touch. You don't want too much yellow on there, so I'm just gonna go in there and just add some longer sweeps on there. I'm just adding a little bit of yellow in there. Perfect. And then I am gonna add a lot of green on there. The green we haven't used yet, so wash. Bring it to a nice point. Add some green and then definitely more of this green down here longer and as you get closer up here a little bit shorter I'm just kind of sweeping from the top of the neck down I'm gonna even add some green up here too in the, in the front area. Get those sweeps up there at the front. And if at any point you feel like you put too much on there, you can let it dry and add some black on top to kind of let it fade out. But be sure it's nice and dry before you add black on top. There you go. So I put some green up here too, kind of some sweeps down into the diagonal. Uh, once I'm done, I am going to add some white to my brush. I wash and dry. Bring this to a point. Make sure your white is nice and clean. Not too much on there. I'm going to go in and, and add a lot of white. Um, it's okay, again, if the white touches the other paints. Just be very careful it doesn't get too muddy, muddy and you're constantly moving your brush around. And white really just kind of brightens it up at the end. And I'll add some white up here too. All right. 
I am going to bring some of my white kind of, it looks like it's just kind of curving over from the back. So I'll just kind of go in there and make a little bit of a curvy sweeps and kind of working off the back a little bit. So I'm starting to the top, kind of add a little bit of a tilt, kind of cleaning up that back area where the mane is falling. So again, I'm going to start at the block, just kind of sweep down with my white paint, a little bit of a curve to it filling up those black spaces on top. So it looks like the mane is falling. Just our top a little bit of a curve. Perfect. Okay. And if you wanted to ever go back and add, let's say you wanted some more green in there, you can go back and add some more green and kind of make it how you'd like. Just be sure it doesn't get muddy. You want to keep on moving that brush so your um, paints don't keep mixing together. You want to go in there and add more pink. It's up to you. You have a nice good base now. Go back in there and kind of mess with it. There are also some feathers. On our main. I would probably give this a couple minutes to dry before I added the feathers on top. Okay, I should probably make the feathers in just a moment. While we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go back for a third coat of this purple. And I'm using my big brush for that. Be very careful of the main area. this get some purple in there all right um after you are done waiting for the mane to dry again i would probably give mine a couple more minutes um you can go in there and add some feathers we did mostly like pink and white on our brush uh but if you feel like you want to switch it up you can uh, but the main concept um so for instance i'm gonna have pink and white on my brush at the same time so i want kind of like a light pink pink and white on my brush I'm gonna make a line where I want my feather to be. So I'm gonna start at the top of the um, of the neck and I'm gonna work my way down. So I have that line right there. And then I'm gonna add more white so you can see it a little bit better. So once I create my line where I want my feather to be, all I'm gonna do is make upside down Vs, which means I'm just gonna uh, come down maybe a little, almost to the center and flick down and flick down and then more. So you'll see those upside down kind of V shapes. And I'm flicking my brush again to the left and to the right, to the left and to the right, to the left. Always be sure that there's one at the end. So there's always one kind of hanging down at the end, kind of finishes it off and maybe some shorter ones as we get closer to the end. So I have some pink and white on my brush at the same time that one in just a little bit so it's not as thick all right um and let me make another one i want more of a white one so i'm just going to add more white to my brush i still want a little bit of pink on there but a little bit of a brighter one so i'll just dip more into my white i didn't even clean my brush i'll make a um, line starting from down uh, excuse me from the um the neck down or excuse me, the back down and then i've made my line more upside down v's i'm gonna Come down almost to the center and flick to the left, flick to the right. Underneath it, flick to the left, to the right. Flick to the left, right. 
And I'm going to make one at the end that's going to come straight down. And maybe some mini ones that are upside down, these two. Make those kind of work in a little bit better. Not as harsh lines up here. Sorry, I'm going to make those a little bit softer by going back and kind of touching them up. All right, and again, you can make as many of those as you want. There is one last little touch to them, and that's making dots. Um, again, you can use whatever colors you want uh, for the dots. I'm gonna use uh, more white first. So I'm gonna use the back of my brush, kind of like how we do with our stars, and I'm gonna make some areas of white. It looks like we're just mostly to kind of like the left. And I am going to go from large to small, where I'm going to push less and less on my brush as we go down. So I'm going to make one to the left. I'm going to make another one down here to the right of this one. I'm going to go from large, push a little bit harder, get smaller, 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 and smaller. And you can put one like just kind of randomly if you wanted to maybe just make some dots. You can go white. But again, you could do different colors if you wanted to. I just kind of want to brighten the silhouette up a little bit with some white paint. All right. Let's say you wanted to do more pink up here. The back of my brush of pink paint you can come up here and go from large to small where I'm pushing less and less on the back of my small brush. And there we are. There is our lovely horse. I love this painting so much. They always come out so fun. Um, but I hope you had a great time. Hope you enjoyed your painting class. And hopefully we'll see you for another one. Have a good night, artists.